it's not like I need another project in the shop, but I recently found a vintage racing go-kart with direct ties to John DeLorean and his brother Jack DeLorean, and I just had to have it. So let's go take a look at it. I'm going to tell you all about it. Vintage racing go-karts are cool, but this thing is just like on the next level. And the reason for that is because it's big. It's actually a 7 tenth scale IndyCar. Uh, it's based off of a McLaren M14, which was a popular IndyCar in the mid-60s. And this thing is 9 feet long. It's about 5 feet wide. The cart was designed by John and Jack DeLorean. Now, you've probably heard the name John DeLorean. That is a famous automotive engineer who worked for Chrysler, Packard, General Motors, and eventually made his own car, the DeLorean, which was made famous by the Back to the Future movie. But uh, in the midst of all that, right about 1972, John's brother Jack decided that he wanted to have uh, his own business, which was going to be uh, miniature Grand Prix courses with miniature Indy cars. And this business concept would allow general public, as long as you had a driver's license, to come pay a fee and you got to make your best effort at a lap. And, uh, you know, it was just for fun, obviously. And these go karts were purpose built. You know, this wasn't just ordered out of a catalog or from a store. I mean, these things were built to be fast. They were built to be tough. And, uh, you know, as you can see, this thing is it's definitely over-engineered. And, you know, I wish there was video footage of them running back in the day, but I haven't been able to find that yet. But what I did find was some pictures to positively identify it. And uh, from there, I was able to determine the, the Jack DeLorean tie-in. And uh, what that leads to is a company called Grand Prix of America. And that was a company that was founded and owned by John and Jack DeLorean. And uh, what they did was assemble 12 carts, and they were built at a great expense. And this is, to my knowledge, not one of the first 12. But they later mass produced uh, about two to 300 of these carts, and they actually had. Outboard Marine Corporation out of Wisconsin handle the work for them uh, to get the price down a little bit lower, but it still cost them about six thousand dollars to build these carts. So these carts originally had rotary engines, uh, and I think part of the the reason for that is just because a rotary engine revs higher and it probably sounded more like a legitimate Indy car. Um, they definitely didn't do it for horsepower. I mean, uh, there's a lot better options than that, but. Anyways, they used rotary engines. They later went to just standard four-stroke engine. Um, these cars had split front axles with a torsion bar, little shocks. Uh, the rear suspension is sort of like a swing arm. The engine mounts on the rear frame section, and it's suspended by a transverse leaf spring. Also, another pair of small shocks back there. Uh, it's got hydraulic brakes on it. Disc up front, drums on the back. It's got rack and pinion steering. Uh, I mean, this thing was a pretty legitimate racing cart. And, uh, you know, it had a massive rear end that would hold up to anything you threw at it. Uh, you know, I don't think it had Hoosier Slicks on it back in the 70s. It probably had some other tire, but the Hoosier Slicks came around probably in the, the 90s. Um, but still, a lot of legitimate parts on this thing. And they were capable of doing 65 miles an hour in a straightaway, like if you really just stretched it out. But on those Grand Prix of America courses, they said they usually topped out around 30 or 35 miles an hour just because it was a tight course with lots of turns. Anyhow, they uh, eventually sold these franchises, tried to grow the business. I, and I think they made some money, but it just, I don't think the profit was there. They ended up going out of business. And uh, a company called Malibu Grand Prix bought the assets of the company and basically did the same thing. Same concept. Uh, they just seemed to, maybe they had a little less overhead, but that company survived. It grew. There were locations all over the country, even on the East Coast. And, uh, you know, it eventually, uh, after they bought those assets, they eventually upgraded to better carts, faster carts. 
Um, so ones like the what, I, what I've got here, that initial two to three hundred carts, uh, they just got sold off to different go kart tracks. Uh, this one in particular went to Raccoon Mountain Amusement Park in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, they had their own miniature Grand Prix track, and you know that's how it ended up in Tennessee. That's how I got my hands on it. So somewhere between the 80s and now, this thing has just been sitting in a garage or sitting outside or something. So um, I stumbled upon it and just had to snatch it up and. You know, I did some research, figured out exactly what it was, and was able to identify it, and uh, just wanted to pass it on to you guys and share a little bit of the story and just let you know that you never know what you're going to find when you're searching Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or, you know, even a, a local yard sale or flea market or something like that. And, uh, you know, while this could have just been a regular old go-kart that somebody pieced together, it's not. It is a, a legit piece of racing history. I'm just glad I was able to find it and buy it. And I was able to do some research and positively identify it. And, uh, you know, digging up the details and the history on some of these old cars, I mean, that's as much fun to me as it is building them or driving them around or having fun in them. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at with this. I've, I've kind of had my fun with it. I've dug up all this history, and now I know exactly what it is. The next step, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to you know, get some tires on it, put a motor on it, get it running and driving. Not really sure about that yet, but I'm just glad that I've got it. And I wanted to share the history with you. And I hope you enjoy it.